Hello, 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 everyone. So just wanted to stop and take a few minutes and talk about this whole thing about um, John MacArthur's statements. Many of you may have heard uh, Pastor John MacArthur. He is a uh, pastor over the um, church in California, and I'm sure everybody is aware of who he is. Well, he recently made some statements about mental health. And so I saw where there was a gang of uh, professing believers that was, um, I would say, just assessing um, their comments about it. They were uh, very hateful, um, just not, it's really unacceptable. And so hopefully they will acknowledge that at some point in their lives and they'll repent of that. Okay, there's that. Now, I did see one brother, uh, Eric Smith. He did an excellent job, I think, on the commentary that he, his, his uh, channel is called uh, Eric Smith, uh, Servant of Christ, I believe. Servant of Jesus Christ, I think it is. See that? Um, you guys may be familiar with him. He did a good, I think he did a good commentary on it. And um, he basically came from the standpoint of saying that, I believe he acknowledges about the whole mental health problems, but he's acknowledging the fact that what we need to do is, is seek the face of God, no matter what we're faced with, whatever disease it is, whatever condition, what have you, and seek the Lord to help us and deliver us. I would say in essence is what he was talking about. And, and that's exactly what we should do. And, and I agree with him when he was saying about John MacArthur, that that's basically what John MacArthur was saying. Um, but him making the statement that, you know, uh, that uh, what, I think he said that mental health is a noble lie or something like that. Here's the thing. That statement has, here's the thing. There are some people, let, let me say this first. And I, I really wasn't going to even say anything about this because I am a, I am a um, medical professional, okay? I actually practice medicine. I prescribe medication. I do all that type of stuff. So I wasn't going to say anything about this topic because I don't want to seem like I'm biased to it just because I have a career in this area. So and hopefully this still wasn't won't come off like that. Here's the thing. I don't care to... I don't even want to be dishonest, okay? I want to be honest. I want to be real about stuff. I don't want to play these games, okay? I don't want to come with some agenda just because I do something, so now I want to support it. No, I want to be honest about things. Here's the thing. There are real life mental health issues, just like there are physical health issues. There are also people that put on, you see this, to be crazy and have mental health problems and all that type of stuff, and really, they're not. They really don't have that actual problem. There is a such thing as sometimes in medical settings where providers are quick to order psych meds, antidepressants, stuff like that. And there are times where it may not be warranted. I get that. So my point is, is that all of these things are happening, okay? So it's not that there's absolutely no mental health uh, conditions. It's not that, but but also there is people that th their issue is um, not, not so much that they have an actual mental health problem, but there are some cases where people are behaving out of their sin. They are. There are some issues like that. And like I said, there are some real life actual mental health conditions and even how these mental health conditions are diagnosed i get it some people are misdiagnosed it happens but that but that happens here here's my thing the misdiagnosing the the prescribing the, the potential to prescribe medications when it's not needed to be prescribed that can happen across the board whether there are a medical condition or a, or a mental health condition this can happen in any any of the settings so here, here's my thing with this whole business. I'm gonna say this, like I said a little bit ago. The way some believers have addressed John MacArthur's uh, statement is just so distasteful. And most of the ones that have been distasteful, they're the ones who's struggling with some issue, okay? And so they've taken it personal I thought God was your God. See what I'm saying? I thought you was trusting in the Lord. I thought you was looking to him. My thing is, 
John MacArthur spoke on part of what happens. He, sp he spoke on part of what happens. And then there's also another part. You see that? So my thing is, when you're a professing believer though, I just don't think you should handle fellow believers in this distasteful, hateful way. I just don't think so. Now, going back to prescribing medications for a depression or actual psych mental health issues, there is a process that we have to go through and that is the, well, let me start off, let me say this. I am not a mental health uh, provider specifically. I see patients for chronic um, conditions, acute health issues. I'm a primary care provider, but occasionally the, the patients that I'm providing primary care for, well, they happen to have some type of mental health issue and I may have to address that. There is a process that we go through us providers that we go through step-by-step -step process to arrive at a diagnosis you don't just say um i've been feeling sad today and then we automatically order you an antidepressant okay that's not how this is it's just not now i get it remember this world is fallen it's broken so you have areas in life where things are not running the way it should be so if you've heard about i don't know somebody some provider somewhere that did that well maybe they did do that in that setting but that's that shouldn't be done and that's not the um rule it's not the rule that we just automatically order all these medications as soon as we come across a kid that 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 that's um overactive and they won't sit down we just say oh Let's, let's uh, order Ritalin, let's do it. Let's do it right now today. That's not how that works. We go through a step-by-step -step process of um, assessment and evaluation to arrive at a diagnosis. And you don't just have one symptom and then now we're gonna prescribe. First off, there's several, we have to have dif differentials. We have to have priority diagnosis that we've arrived at by making a detailed assessment, evaluation, testing and all that and then you have differentials. Differential diagnosis is what you consider that it may be the problem based upon the evidence that you have, have discovered. And what happens, we've got to work through that and narrow it down, okay? That's how this really, really works. Now, I've heard it being said that for mental health problems, we don't do any type of testing, no, no type of uh, uh, diagnostic testing, okay? Uh, like, like where you do blood work. Well, there is some blood work that's done. Like for example, and I believe um, Brother uh, Eric mentioned this. We, we, there are times we can check serotonin levels, okay? We can check also dopamine levels. Like people that have Parkinson's disease, and if you've ever met anybody with Parkinson's disease, they're slowed down and their, their coordination is, is, is altered, okay? And that's because they don't have enough dopamine, okay? The dopamine levels are, are off. Here's the thing. Mental health and things like that is real. It is a real situation, but God is greater than anything that we face in this life. I, th this is absolutely true. What we've got to understand is, is that in this life, there are, there's deception all throughout. Okay. There's deception all throughout. So like I, like I'm kind of getting off track here, but what, what I'm saying is this. So, so let me back up for a minute too. So I've, I've worked on a, uh, when, when I used to be a nurse, before I became a nurse practitioner, when I was a practicing nurse at uh, bedside, like in the hospitals and all that, I used to be a brain injury nurse, okay? So I worked on a brain injury unit. People on that unit, this, this right here is all messed up, okay? It's all messed up, it's not right, okay? So, so, so and what you need to understand is the anatomy of the brain, we have uh, different parts of our lobes um, there's functionalities for different lo for different parts of our lobe. We have speech, we have emotion, we have all, all type of stuff that's going on. And the chemical imbalance, it is a real thing that can actually happen, okay? I do understand that there's people out in this world repping this stuff that, it, that they may not have it. I get that. I do get that there's providers in the world that may be over medicating people. I get that. There is a reality. You see what I'm saying? That we've got to stay in. And even in the reality of all of this, this fallen world, because at the, at the heart of the matter is sin. You see that sin is at the heart of this whole problem. It just is. With that being said, what the Lord has done is this, okay? The Lord has allowed scientists, providers, you know, medical professionals. I'm an advanced practice nurse, uh, medical doctors. All of us, he, he's allowed us to take what he has created, all right? 
examine it, evaluate it, um, research, do all that business. And when we see, okay, we can assess somebody doesn't have enough of this in their body. Well then, this, this, this substance right here creates that, that type of thing. So then something is put together, some type of medication, some type of herbal even thing to address that. Do you understand that? That's how this works. Now, ultimately, we want to look to the Lord to save us and deliver us. Like, for example, there's two, there's, and I'm kind of all, all over the place with this topic, but there's that. There's two different um, things in regards to uh, depression. You can have situational depression. Say like you lost your whole family today, okay? Everybody, a home invasion, everybody was murdered, okay? You're going to be depressed. You see what I mean? You're going to be sad about that. Matter of fact, we see depression in, in, the, in the Psalms, we see the psalmist, he expresses um, feelings of depression. We see in Lamentations, you know, you, you hear this talk of, man, this is messed up. How long, Lord, are we going to suffer this? You, you hear Job in his statements when he was afflicted and just Job, in the book of Job, he had no support, nothing. He was in a bad way, okay? And you could see that this was affecting him. And what happens? What do we see? We see these people continually trusting in the Lord. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like I said, there can be situational depression where it's you having a hard time managing through this. All right. And you need counseling. You need some, some discipleship. You need someone to kind of come alongside you and be that support and help you um look to the Lord and acknowledge his sovereignty and trust in him and all that business. And the Lord is the one who gives us the strength to, to get through things. Remember, uh, who was that? Paul said, he made a statement and I can't even recall which, which book it is in New Testament. Anyway, uh, everybody was going against him and he said that everyone was against him and he, he was basically standing alone. He said, but you know what? The Lord stood with him and strengthened him. You see this? So, so we have that. Then we have, because we live in a fallen world, remember this, everything's messed up now, okay? You gotta understand this. We do have the matter of somebody having something wrong with how they process things in their brain. Something wrong with like a chemical imbalance, okay? We have people that, it's not even a situational depression. There's people that have an ideal life. They have the, the husband, they have the children, they have the, the the this, the that, and you know, they but they're but they're depressed. They they can't they can't understand why they're crying all the time. Now, now let me let me back up for one, one more time. Uh, a lot of times these are people that are unbelievers, they're they're not following Christ. But then there's episodes where there are actual believers that that prof that profess Christ. And for some reason, like for example, here here's a good example for you guys postpartum depression now now if there's any women out there now i've never suffered postpartum depression but i have seen patients yeah that have had that i've heard of cases now where you didn't have a baby everything you got a, you got the husband there everything's really you, you're not poor you're not none of those things are happening but for some reason you bring your baby home and you're just depressed you're depressed you're overwhelmed you're 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 just uh it's, it's this over overwhelming feeling of um detachment and down and all that stuff the root cause is sin okay that's the root cause but this is an actual thing that's happening so this is what providers do okay i'm not and i'm talking about providers that just all they're doing is trying to deliver care one of our main rules as being a provider is do no harm Okay, that is that is the ethic. One of the several ethics that we follow, but one of the do no harm. Okay, so if we see someone suffering like that. We go over the series of questions. We go over the evaluation, the all that business, assessing, and and not just those. We assess the whole picture of the patient, their social life, you know, everything. Assess all, of, see what is what is getting in the way. Maybe they're we we do that. We assess the diet. We do all those things. Our concern is the concern is. We don't, of course, want anybody to commit suicide or, you know, you, we don't want anybody to do anything like that. So when it seems like you still have this imbalance, you can't seem to get it together. What have we done? We've investigated medications to treat these types of things. We see people, I, I remember um, when I was doing a rotation at a uh, mental health hospital it was like an actual institution where people stay at in a part of Indiana. 
And I remember, and what the, the rotation that I need to do in that setting was, I'm basically interviewing these mental health people. And there were people there that were uh, put in there because they, it was like murderers there too, people that was considered insane, okay? Now this one man I interviewed, he started taking drugs. He had started taking cocaine. And this is what he said, I'm just, just telling you, okay? Um, I was doing the interview and, and what, what we do is we dig deep, we ask all these series of questions and we really try to kind of get a profile of, of, of this because we kind of make a case study out of them. So he shared with me that he started doing crack cocaine and after he did that, he started hearing these voices. He started seeing people, you know, and stuff like that, that wasn't, that, that people would tell him that there's nobody there, okay? And these are like episodes that this would happen to him. And come to find out later, just research, study, and all that, do you know that based upon the research, based upon study, it has been discovered that there's people that could have an underlying psych issue, meaning there's something that's not balanced well in your brain, okay? In your whole, in that whole, and, and, and if you were to look up the anatomy of the brain, there's a lot going on. The hinder brain, the hypothalamus, I mean, there's just a lot going on, okay? It just is. You, you would see, it's a lot going on. When there's something off with that, something's going to be off, okay? It just is. So this individual said, so basically he ends up being diagnosed with schizophrenia, not he, he said he saw something one day and then now he got schizophrenia. No, no, no. There has to be several symptoms and, and, and uh, just there's several things that come together to support a diagnosis, okay? There's, there's associating symptoms. I, do want, I want you guys to understand this and you know what? I wasn't going to do this video because I, I you know, people are critical and I get it. I, you know, I, I can be critical. You know, it's good to be critical actually because you, wanna, you want to critically think through things and assess things. And I don't want people to think that, well, the reason why I'm saying this is because I'm on this side of the fence. I'm really being extremely honest with you guys right now. I want you to understand that I, I don't want us to be insensitive to people. And at the same time, I don't want us to, of course, I don't want us to disregard what the word of God says either. Do you see what I mean? So I want us to ultimately trust God, but I want us to also acknowledge reality. I mean, Trusting God is acknowledging reality, right? I want us to just be even kill, you know, be, you know, have an understanding. That, that's what I want us to do. I want us to have an understanding. So at any rate, that dude I was talking about, it was so sad because I'm like, he really has a mental health problem. He really, really does. Like, and I just, if, if I, I followed this guy for, uh, I think it was that semester was maybe six weeks I think it was followed him for us for a long time and and I could see that he doesn't want to be that way you know it, it's it, it's it's so sad and once again this is all because of sin it's because we live in a fallen world all right but even those people that have mental health issues they also need to seek the face of God to help them they, they also do and there's that element where there is this imbalance that needs to be addressed. I think one of the, uh, what's his name, Kanye West, he provides a good example to me. And of course, I haven't met him personally. I don't know his life. I don't know all that business. But what he display on social, on these social platforms, and from what I have dealt with in, you know, um, seeing patients, you know, being a provider, just just my career, you know, just just uh, you know the experience with patients. I see those those symptoms of bipolar. I see the the the, the um, mania that that he has. I see it, and I feel sad for him. And his answer is Christ. The answer is Christ. And like I said, this mental health issue, a real mental health issue, though. See that's see there's the catch right there. Because like I said, there's some people playing crazy. All right, there's some people using it as a crutch. To, to act a fool, I get that. But for those people that really have mental health issues, the Lord has providentially allowed scientists, healthcare providers to um, put together treatment plans to address this, th th these type of issues clinically, okay? Because 
when there's that imbalance, when there's something going, there's a clinical issue. It's clinically, there's a clinical problem. It just is. Now, back to what John MacArthur said about what they're trying to do to our children. He's absolutely correct. He's absolutely correct. We shouldn't, here's the thing. A child acts up, uh, a child just, he, you know, children are sinners, right? We were all sinners, right? But you know how you, ch children, they're so sweet and cute and all that. And you realize this is a whole sinner. Exactly. So, so they act in the food, doing the most. The first answer is not to, to drug them. That's not the first answer. We, are, we should absolutely assess diet. We should absolutely assess their social life, their surroundings, who's, you know, what's going on in their lives. We should, we should do a holistic approach, all right? to narrow it down to what the plan of care should be. You see, you see what I'm saying? And ultimately, over all of that, we're trusting in the Lord, okay? So I hope that me sharing this is <laughs> a good idea, see that? Hope you guys get the point of this video. So just to wrap this up, those of you who have taken it personal, what John MacArthur said, okay, you're in your feelings. You done got all the way in your flesh now and you're doing the most on these social media streets. I would encourage you not to do that. I would encourage you to acknowledge the fact that we're all sinners and those of us that are believers are sinners saved by grace. I would encourage you to acknowledge the fact that, well, guess what? If you actually have an actual condition, like I heard somebody say about PTSD, which is a real situation, it is. You can, you can suffer a traumatic, like the people that um, suffered the 9-11, uh, that survived that, you best believe they may have a, a, tr a PTSD now. Do you see what I'm saying? Th th this is because we do have a psyche. I, you guys should take out some time and uh, do some physiology and anatomy on the brain. There's a lot going on. I wouldn't even have time to go through all that. There's a lot going on with this right here. It is. Um, th there's a lot. And then we have the psyche. And, and so anyway, th there's a lot going on. So with that being said, if you have some mental health problem, right? And you was offended by what John MacArthur said. Remember, you have the Lord, okay? You, the, the Lord knows exactly what's going on with you. You see that? You're supposed to be looking to God anyway. You, do, do you understand that? And we're supposed to give grace. So just because MacArthur didn't say the other part of the story, like the issues that, that, that do happen, he, he said the other part, which it does happen that people use it as a crutch and act a fool and do the most and, and maybe they don't even have any mental illness. Because he didn't say all the other parts, now you're, you're, you're in your feelings and you doing the most against a fellow believer, against a man that has, now listen, listen, let me just say this real quick. I understand that everybody's eye level, your eye level to me. Okay, I don't look up to you and I don't look down to you. I don't do neither one of those things, okay? So I understand that we're all sinners. You understand that? So I'm not trying to cap for MacArthur because you know people be doing that. What I'm saying is I'm acknowledging the fact that John MacArthur, he has been solid on that teaching that word, okay? That's the thing. We're in the midst of a whole bunch of false teachers in this world. So I'm appreciative when I hear a man of God tell the truth. And what I don't like is I don't like to be... Um, just being just malicious and slanderous against an individual that actually is a believer and actually preaches the word of God. It's just unacceptable. So, okay, you disagree that he didn't mention the other parts, the other parts, the where people do have actual issues. Okay, well, guess what? If that's a reality in your world and your family, listen, remember the Lord got you anyway. See that? You're supposed to be ultimately trusting him anyway. Do you see what I'm saying here? So I just, I, I just think that we we need to just, just stop. I wanted to point out the fact that, and then and then there's some of us that say that we try to completely, completely ignore the mental health crisis, and don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Let let's let's not do that because that's not being that's it's just not it's not keeping with reality. It's just not keeping with reality. Not every situation is the same. And like I said, acknowledging that there is a such thing as mental health, that you shouldn't excuse behavior. That doesn't mean that you don't trust God. Because listen to me, 
If somebody told you that you had a tumor on your lungs and it was cancerous, you're gonna pray to the Lord to have mercy. What does the scripture say? Call for the elders that they may pray for you and that you would be healed. Is that what it, that's exactly what it says and it's exactly what you should be doing. And you know what you're gonna be doing? The provider, the doctor is gonna to say to you, we need to remove that tumor. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna go ahead and get the surgery? After you get the surgery, guess what else they're going to recommend? They're going to recommend that you do radiation or chemotherapy. You know why? Because they're trying to destroy any other cells that, that are cancerous. And in doing that, your regular cells are going to be affected. See, that's another thing. When we use medicine and treatments and stuff, there's, there's side effects and stuff. It is what it is. That's the way it's set up. But guess what? You will most likely risk that because what you're trying to do, you're trying to address the problem clinically. The real life mental health issues real life where people are taking medication they're trying to address the issue clinically okay all right i get it people that are suffering depression i'm talking about situational depression you know what you really need to just you know a lot of times you can get out of yourself and really seek the face of god right you're, you're able to process um, your brain is not, here's the thing, but with that type of thing, there's not an actual chemical imbalance or something going on in your psyche brain per se. You get what I'm saying? That's like, um, what am I saying? Um, uh, that's out of your control. Okay. With situation of depression, because situation of depression is because something happened. You see what I mean? That you, that you're trying to bear it. Okay. So, so my point is, is that, <sighs> There's different situations that take place. There's just so many different things that can happen. Ultimately, we gotta trust God. Um, with all the stuff that has happened because of sin, okay? So we have mental health problems, we have physical health problems, we have emotional problems, we have all these problems now because of sin. And the Lord has, I think I said this already, he's providentially worked through scientists, right? And you know, healthcare providers are a type of scientists because you know we evaluate, we we do tests, we do uh, research, you know, all that. even even um, the bases that I uh, prescribe and 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 um, you know order, you know, medication, all that stuff is based upon research. You see, so with that being said, he's he's allowed us to do that, and he providentially works through that, and the Lord is the one who allows us to come up with plans of care and things like that. Is there people being over-medicated? Yes. Are there people in the world that could get misdiagnosed? Yes. Is this, is, is at the root of this sin? Yes. Do we need to trust God? Absolutely. Okay. He's greater than all. He's greater than all. But we've got to understand that because we're in a fallen world, there are things that happens to us. It just is. I'm going to say this real quick. Remember the prophet Elijah? Remember Elijah, right? Remember Elisha? Now, if you've read about him, Elisha, guess what? He died of an illness. Now remember, Elisha did all type of miracles. The Lord did a lot of stuff through him. And in fact, when Elisha died, when they buried him and they, 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 he was buried in the, in the grave and, and um, I think uh, some, oh wait, a dead, his body or a dead man's body, bones or something, fell over into the grave that he was in and that body got up set up or something like that I mean, you can read it read about it in more detail the point is, is this that goes to show you that the power of God was on Elisha even even him did the power of God was on him but he died of an illness the Lord could have delivered him from that illness but he died from it you see what I'm saying we've got to understand that there's a lot of stuff that happens to us here because the world is fallen okay it's fallen world so ultimately, we trust God. We look to him. We understand he's sovereign. We understand that he has allowed the medical uh, industry to exist. But we've got to be wise about all of this, okay? And I get, they call it, you know, they say the uh, big pharma. And I get it. You know, I, and you know what? I prescribe medications, okay? I, I, I get about big pharma. I get that. In every setting, there is where people are doing what they're supposed to do and there's people that's not doing what they're supposed to do. You understand that, right? Even in the, even in church, you, your whole church, you, there's places that got the name church on it and, and they're not no bit of a church than, than a pig house, okay? 
So my point is, is that all of these things are happening. That's my whole point, okay? All of this is a reality. Our, the ultimate answer is Christ, okay? Is our Lord. We wanna ultimately put our hope in him. We don't wanna be, we don't wanna jump to take medicine all the time, I agree. Don't do that. Let's seek the face of God in everything that we do. Let's understand, let's have an understanding, okay? Let's have an understanding, all right, guys? Have an understanding. Look to God and stay in your lane and uh, be purposeful not to, not to be hateful just because something hit home to you, just because in this life you have, you have suffered some evil and now you're so sensitive, okay? You're sensitive. Stop doing that. All right, guys. <clears throat> I'm starting to get hoarse now. Hope you get the point. I think I was all over the place, but we'll see what happens. So if you like anything that I said today in this video, like the video. If you uh, haven't subscribed, subscribe, all that good stuff. What else? Leave a comment too. Let me know. <clears throat> nah, I feel like I need to drink some water. Let me know what you think of everything that I said. Let me know how you feel about it. I would like to hear from you. Hopefully you get what I am saying. And like I said, um, um, Eric Smith did a good commentary on the video that he did. I think it was really encouraging. And so, uh, so anyway, there's that. All right, guys. So now remember, if you, do, if you don't do nothing else in this life, listen, I'm going to tell you guys, fellow believers, continue to do this. Continue in him, in him. Who are we continuing in? Who do we continue in? Man, you got to continue in Christ alone. Be blessed.